for phonics class today, we are learning the four letter phonics sounds. Digraphs have two letters, trigraphs have three, and today we are learning the four letter combinations. Let's go! The first one is T-I-O-N, which pronounces shun, shun, shun. For example, we have action, action, shun, shun, action. Very good. Then we have motion, 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 motion. Good. And also there is station, station. Shun, shun, station. Very good. Once again, T I O N pronounces shun, shun, shun. Next, we have S I O N, which is the same sound. Shun, shun, shun. For example, we have mansion, mansion. Shun, shun, mansion. Very good. There's also tension, tension. Shun, shun, tension. Good. There's also mission, like in Mission Impossible. Mission. Shun, shun, mission. Very good. Finally, we have I O U S, which is ears, ears, ears. For example, we have curious, ears, ears, curious. Very good. Then there's envious, ears. Yes, envious. Good. And finally, obvious. Obvious. Like yes, yes, obvious. Very good. So once again, I O U S pronounces yes, yes, yes. But there's also another way to sound it, which is just us, us, us. For example, cautious. Cautious. Us, us, cautious. Good. And then there's religious, religious, us, us, religious, good. And then there's also delicious, delicious, us, us, delicious, very good. Now let's do some practice. See if you can spot the right phonic sounds in these following words. The first one is anxious, anxious. What sound can you hear in anxious? Good. Us, us, I O U S, anxious, very good. What about this one? This is lotion, lotion. What sound can you hear in lotion? Good, shun, shun, lotion, which in this case is T I O N. What about this one? Vision, vision. What sound can you hear in vision? Good. Shun, shun, vision. So this one is also S I O N, which is the same sound as T I O N. If you can do this, that means you're ready for the reading practice. I'll give you three sentences from easy to difficult and see if you can read them. This is the first one. I'll give you a moment. The serious explosion at the station was questioned. Good, this is hard. The serious explosion at the station was questioned. If you can do this, you're already very high level, but try to read level two. I'll give you a moment. I was curious about the invitation to the mansion. Good. I was curious about the invitation to the mansion. How was that? If you can do that, wait till you get to level three. This is the last sentence. I'll give you a moment. I was furious about the collision on vacation. Very good. I was furious about the collision on vacation. If you can do this, you're amazing and you're ready for the review. Today we learned the three four-letter phonic sounds. The first one is T-I-O-N, which is shun, 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 like in action. S-I-O-N has the same sound, shun, 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 like in mansion. 
and then I O U S is ears, 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 like in curious, but it's also us, 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 like in cautious. Very good. Take some time to practice these four letter phonic sounds and see how many other words you can think of with these sounds. After this, I'll see you in the next class for some more learning fun. That's all for now. See you next time. Bye bye. For Comic Book Tuesday today, we are reading Monkey with the Two Belt and the Seaside Shenanigans by Chris Monroe. Let's go. It's Chico Bonbon again. Chico Bonbon was fixing a sprinkler on a hot summer day. The sprinkler had been spraying too much water. Then it stopped spraying. Chico took a closer look. This may require some fixing, he said. Chico had all the tools for the job in a little toolbox tucked in his tool belt. The sprinkler was soon working again. Just then, the male kitty rolled up. Hi, Chico. Hello, kitty. It was a postcard from Clark. He was on vacation at his uncle's seaside resort. The postcard read, Dear Chico, please come to the beach. We need your help at my uncle's resort. Things are breaking. Please come soon. Your friend, Clark. P.S. Also, we can go surfing. The waves here are sweet. If you remember, Clark is the elephant from last week's story. I think I will go to the beach thought Chico Bonbon. They definitely need my help. Chico was also a big fan of surfing. He packed his bag and called for a ride. Off they went. But they had a few problems along the road. A tire on the rickshaw went flat and fell over. Chico fixed it with air, spearmint gum and some clover. A frog on a bicycle went in the ditch. Chico rescued his bike with balloons on a hitch. They stopped at a drive-in to eat some burritos. He fixed a torn screen to keep out the mosquitoes. Their root bee dispenser was having some trouble. He loosened a nut and out popped a bubble. Soon, they arrived at the beach. The rickshaw driver said goodbye and pedaled off. Chico looked around. The resort looked amazing. Clark came walking up the beach. He was wearing a Hawaiian shirt Hawaiian shorts and a Hawaiian visor. He had forgotten his tool belt at home. Hey Chico, am I ever glad to see you? Something is running a monkey and we don't know what it is. Chico was glad to see his old friend, but his outfit made it a little hard to focus. A lot of things have been broken, said Clark's Uncle Bill, who suddenly appeared from behind some surfboards. It's very mysterious. That is mysterious, Chico agreed. I think we should start fixing the broken things. Maybe we can find some clues. They walked down to one of the cabanas. It had a big hole in the roof. Several coconuts and some popcorn were underneath the hole. It looks like something or someone fell through. Chico put on his safety harness and climbed the roof. He didn't see anything unusual except for a green feather and a big piece of seaweed. He tucked the feather in his tool belt, then he fixed the hole with some palm leaves, twine and nails. The next broken thing was one of Uncle Bill's little sailboats. Something had scuffed the floor so much that now the boat was leaking. Whatever it was had also filled the sailboat storage bench with breadcrumbs. This is odd, thought Chico as he carefully repaired the bottom of the boat. He patched it and then vacuumed up the breadcrumbs with a wet, dry vac he borrowed from a friendly sea captain. Next, they walked down the hammocks. I think something has chewed the ropes, said Uncle Bill. Yes, I believe you are right, said Chico. Kind of a weird thing to do, observed Clark. They're not very tasty. Chico repaired the ropes and retied the hammocks. Underneath, he found a cupcake wrapper and triangular footprints in the sand. Just then, one of the lifeguards ran up. Something's wrong with the water slide! They all rushed to the slide. The water was barely trickling down the tube. Where's all the water? 
pulling out is hurting my knees. Whoosh! Suddenly they all heard a loud swoosh at the top of the tube. Sliders blasted out of the bottom of the slide. They were all okay, but extremely waterlogged. They scrambled out of the pool. Water was spraying out of the bottom of the slide like a giant fire hose. Everyone ran for cover. Chico went behind the slide to a small building. One, the door would not bulge. Two, he checked the doorknob with a 90 degree turn detector. No turning was detected. Three, he loosened it with his half inch Lucy Lou. Four, he put a wobbly wedge under the knob. Five, he sprayed some invisible oil behind the wedge. It was hard to tell how much to use. Six, he bursted the water hole with bubble powder. Three tiny bubbles floated out. A good sign. Seven, he felt hungry, so he ate a banana. Eight, he wiggled the doorknob, then turned it slowly. It made a small sound. Click. The door unlocked. He slowly pushed it open and peeked around the edge. He looked inside the pump room. He could not believe his eyes. A large green duck was tap dancing on the pump handle. Chico had not expected this. After a moment, he politely said, What are you doing up there? Dancing. How do you like my moves? They're really very good. But you are causing a few problems with the water slide. I'm causing problems, said the duck. Yes, said Chico. Some mice just went on the ride of their lives. Would it help if I got down from here? Asked the duck. Yes, said Chico as the duck backflipped onto the ground. Chico turned the handle to slow down the water as the duck moonwalked backward into a pile of buckets. Whoa, stuff around here sure breaks a lot. As Chico helped him up, he realized something. He pulled the feather from his tool belt pocket and held it up to the duck. He noticed several things about the duck that matched some of the other clues. He looked at the duck's feet. They matched the shapes in the sand by the hammocks. Chico had solved the mystery. Just then, Clark and Uncle Bill showed up. I think I figured out how everything got broken, said Chico, glancing towards the duck. But I'm pretty sure it was accidental. A duck? That's all, said Clark. I thought it was a monster or a wild animal. Well, he is a little wild, actually, said Chico. But he's also a really good dancer. The duck danced outside and hopped on his bike. He rode off down the beach. Next time, don't try to break so much stuff. Another problem solved, said Clark. You sure are good at fixing things, Chico. I wonder if he'll come back. Well, at least everything is all fixed now. So guys, now, how about this idea? Let's go surfing. So off they ran to catch the last waves before sunset. The end. Wow, Chico and Clark sure got up to some really wild adventures. What do you think about this story? Let me know down below. And also share with me what do you think about the duck. After this, I'll see you in the next lesson for some more learning fun. That's all for now. See you next time. Bye bye. For social studies in December, we are learning all about money. We've already learned the types of money saving money and spending money and today we are learning about earning money if you like money then let's learn how to earn some money together let's go why earn money why must people have money people use money to pay for their needs money buys food and clothes and everything we need to live People also use money to pay for their wants. They spend it on fun toys and tasty sweets. Ways to earn money. People work to earn money. Kids rake leaves, wash cars, and babysit younger kids. What can you do to earn money today? Share some ideas down below. Some kids earn money from their parents. They earn an allowance for helping out at home. They take out the trash, they wash dishes after dinner. 
What can you do to help your family in the house to earn an allowance? Some people sell used or handmade things to earn money. They sell these things at yard sales or on websites. Kids earn money by selling lemonade too. They sell fresh cookies at bake sales too, using earned money. People save, spend or give away the money they earn. Kids often save their money in a piggy bank. They can spend it later. Don't forget to save your money too. People also spend their money on goods. They buy books, shoes and more things. People also spend things on services. They get a haircut or have their car fixed. Sometimes people donate some of their earned money. They give it to charities and to people in need. These are high level people earning more money. Most people keep some money in a savings account at the bank. The money grows because it earns interest. Then people can have even more money. Now let's go through some new words we learned in today's book. The first word is allowance, which is money paid to someone at regular times, like every day or every week. Many kids earn an allowance every week. A bank is a business where people keep their money. Charities are groups that raise money to help people in need. Donate is to give something away for free. Goods are things that can be bought and sold. Interest is money that is paid to people for keeping their money in a bank account, saving bonds or other account. Needs are things that people must have to live, such as food, clothes and a place to live. Savings account is a bank account that pays people interest for keeping their money in it. Services are work that helps others. And finally, wants are things people would like to have, such as games, toys and treats. Now it's your turn. What did you learn in today's book about earning money? And what are some ideas you have about how to earn money for yourself? Share with me down below. Take some time and then I'll see you in the next lesson for some more learning fun. That's all for now. I'll see you next time. Bye bye. For Animal World today, we are learning about the warthogs, one of the silliest, goofiest animals in the safari. Let's go. Warthogs are actually wild pigs. They have long snouts and strong tusks. They also have bumps on the sides of their heads. The bumps are called warts. That's why they're called warthogs. Warthogs graze on grasses in savannas. They also eat berries, bark and roots. Warthogs dig roots with their snouts. They kneel on the front legs as they dig like this. Male warthogs live alone most of the time. Sometimes they fight over a female. They use their tusks to push each other. Their warts protect them from getting hurt. The females raise their piglets in groups called sounders. They watch out for lions and leopards. Warthogs snort loudly and run when they see their predators Watch out! The piglets dash into a burrow to hide and their mother guards the burrow with her tusks. Peep out! Now let's go through some words we learnt in this book. The first word is burrow, which is a hole or tunnel in the ground. Warthogs often use burrows that are built by other animals. Graze is to feed on plants and grasses. Piglets are young warthogs. Predators are animals that hunt other animals for food. Savannas are grasslands with very few trees. Snouts are the jaws and noses of some animals. Sounders are groups of young warthogs and their young. Tusks are large long teeth that stick out of the mouths of some animals. And wild means living in nature. Now it's your turn. What do you think about the warthogs? Share with me down below. And also, let me know what are some things you learned about the warthogs today. Take your time, and then I'll see you in the next lesson for some more learning fun. That's all for now. I'll see you next time. Bye bye. For social studies in December, we are learning all about plant power. We've already learned about poisonous plants and pollinating plants 
And today we are learning about prickly plants. Let's go. Chapter one: Thorns and spines. Bright red flowers bloom among green leaves. What a nice plant! But flowers aren't all this plant has. It is called a crown of thorns, and for a good reason. The stem and branches are covered with sharp spines. The one-inch spine poke anything that gets too close. Plants like the crown of thorns are very prickly. Why? Plants cannot move. Spines serve as a defense against what? Predators such as birds that try to eat the plant. Did you know that a crown of thorns plant can sprawl more than six feet? That's 1.8 meters. That is longer than an adult bicycle. Spines stick straight up on the porcupine tomato plant. These are bright orange. There is almost no way to miss them. The stems and leaves are covered with these sharp, dangerous spines. Ouch! They are also a warning that this plant has poison. Stay away. Take a look. Most plants have the same main parts. Prickly plants, such as rose bushes, also have prickles. These help keep hungry herbivores away. Oregon gray poly might not look very prickly, but look closer. This prickly plant has sharp spines on the edges of its leaves. How sharp? They can pierce through thick skin. Animals looking for a meal learn a painful lesson. They need to fill their bellies elsewhere. Chapter two: Spiny cacti. Cacti are some of the best known prickly plants. Almost all cacti have spines or barbed bristles. Some cacti, such as these ones, are completely covered in spines. It wouldn't be any fun to get caught in this prickly web. Is there a brain in that pot? The brain cactus has wavy parts that make it look like a brain. Look, but don't touch. Short, stiff spines cover it. It is smart to stay away. Did you know that cacti spines can be six inches long? Ouch! Chapter three: Prickly trees. Trees can be fun to climb, but you may not want to climb the floss silk tree. Why? Large spines cover the trunk. They also cover the branches. Hungry animals have a hard time reaching the tree's flowers and fruits without getting hurt. It is best to avoid this prickly tree. Hungry animals might want to chomp on a honey locust tree's leaves, but if they are smart, they will find another plant to nibble and chew. The big, sharp thorns on these trees can be 12 inches long. That is as long as a ruler. Did you know that soldiers in the Civil War used honey locust tree thorns for what? For pinning together the torn uniforms, the thorns on a whistling thorn tree protect against large animals, like what? Giraffes and antelopes, even hungry elephants. The thorns are long and sharp. Whistling thorn trees are home to busy little ants. How? Some thorns have round, hollow bases. The ants chew holes in the bases to get inside. Prickly plants around the world poke to protect themselves. Where have you seen prickly plants? Let me know down below. Now let's go through some words we learnt in today's book. The first word is bloom, which is to produce flowers. Branches are parts of plants that grow out of the main trunk or bole. Bristles are short, stiff hairs on plants or animals. Defense is the ability to protect from harm or attack. Herbivores are animals that only eat plants. Hollow means empty on the inside. Pierce is to make a hole or opening in or through an object. Poison is a substance that can kill or harm. Predators are living things that get food by killing and eating other living things. Prickly means having small, sharp points. Spines are hard, sharp, pointed growths on plants or trees. And finally, stems are part of a plant from which leaves and flowers grow. Now it's your turn. Which prickly plant is your favorite? And what else did you learn about prickly plants in today's book? Share with me down below. Take some time to think about it. And when you're ready, I'll see you in the next lesson for some more learning fun. That's all for now. I'll see you next time. Bye bye. In today's lesson, we are reading Rubber Dub Dub. Three men and a pancake. 
Don't forget to stay to the end of the story because then we have some questions to test your understanding. Are you ready? Let's go. Once upon a Tuesday, a baker decided to cook his biggest and best pancake ever. It was enormous. He tossed it once and then twice and then, oops, the pancake flew right out of the kitchen window. I'm free, cried the pancake, happily rolling down the hill. Come back, cried the baker, chasing after him. No way, called the pancake, whirling down the hill. I'm on a roll. Come back, cried the butcher, joining the chase. No way, cried the pancake, whizzing down the hill. Watch me fly. Come back, cried the candlestick maker, running after them all. No way, cried the pancake, but suddenly he stopped rolling. Then he started rolling backwards. Help, cried the butcher as the pancake rolled over him. Help, cried the baker as he got stuck too. Help, said the candlestick maker, we're all stuck and there's a giant coming. Uh-oh, fee fi fo fum cried the giant. Dinner time, my favourite, a giant pancake, or should I say a man-cake. Yummy! Help, cried the men, help, cried the pancake. But then the pancake had an idea. He rolled away from the giant. You're not fast enough, squealed the butcher as the giant gave chase. He'll catch us, cried the baker. Look out, shouted the candlestick maker. There's a river. Sure enough, they rolled right into the water. Splash! We'll drown, cried the butcher. I can't swim, cried the baker. The giant's going to catch us, yelped the candlestick maker. Trust me, smiled with the pancake. The river was wide and the current was strong, but thanks to the pancake, they all floated safely on the water. The giant tried to chase them as they floated away, but he was too slow. Finally, they were swept to shore. We're safe, cried the three men. Look, we're not stuck anymore. The water has softened the pancake's batter and they all pulled themselves free. You've saved us, Pancake, they cheered. But the pancake was now soggy and full of holes. He couldn't roll anymore. Go home, he told them. I'm glad you're safe. Sadly, he watched them go. But soon, the three of them returned with a wheelbarrow and frying pans. Together, the townsfolk set to work repairing the pancake's holes until finally he was even bigger than before. The pancake jumped for joy and everyone cheered. Hip hip hooray for the biggest, brightest and best pancake ever. Now it's time to do some comprehension questions. Today we have five. The first question is, how big was the pancake? Was it normal, tiny, small or huge? What do you think? I'll give you a moment. The answer is D. Huge. The pancake was huge. Question 2. Who made the pancake? Was it the giant, the butcher, the baker or the candlestick maker? What do you think? I'll give you a moment. The answer is C. It was the baker who made the pancake. Question 3. Why did the pancake run away? Was it A. It didn't like maple syrup. B. It didn't want to be cooked. C. It didn't want to be eaten or was it D. It wanted to be free? What do you think? I'll give you a moment. The answer is D. It wanted to be free. Very good. Question 4. Who did the pancake save? Was it A. The giant? Was it B. The dog? Or was it C. The butcher, baker and the candlestick maker? What do you think? I'll give you a moment. It was C. He saved the butcher, the baker and candlestick maker too. Final question. What happened to the pancake at the end? It was saved. It was eaten. It was cooked. What do you think? I'll give you a moment. The answer is A. It was saved and they all had a party to celebrate. Very good. How many answers did you get correct? Share with me down below. If you got 5 out of 5, it means you got 100% and you're amazing. Now it's your turn. What do you think about this story and what did you learn from it? Share with me down below. 
take some time to think about it. And when you're ready, I'll see you in the next story for some more learning fun. That's all for now. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.